Good afternoon and welcome everybody I am TD. We are going to have a talk by Victor and Eugene on public transport navigation using OSM on by Osman. It's going to be a 20 minutes talk and 5 minutes for questions. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, hello everybody. Uh, uh, SOTOM uh, 2019 uh, is coming to the end. Uh, uh, many of you already uh, tired. Uh, so our present uh, presentation uh, will not be difficult. Uh, and uh, at first, uh, the name of uh, our application pronoun we pronounce Osmond. Yeah? Uh, during uh, this conference, I heard other variants <laughs> too. But uh, we say Osmond, <laughs> OK? <laughs> uh, also, the end uh, and I don't know. Okay, uh, we are Osman team, uh, developers of the application, which many of you know and uh, use. Uh, Osman is called as uh, Swiss knife uh, uh, among similar applications. Uh, by the way, we took a survey uh, of features of Osmond, compare it uh, with um, other applications in such areas as casual tourism, active tourism, OSM, and social tourism. And it turned out that um, in these areas like uh, casual tourism, active tourism, and OSM, we have uh, in this uh, uh, we have a bunch of features uh, that overlap with many applications uh, in general. Uh, with social tourism, we still have uh, work to do. Yeah? Uh, now we will talk um, about the feature that uh, relates to casual tourism. Uh, it uh, work of lines. It is uh, uh, nice to have for many people, especially Osmars. Uh, and this is uh, navigation by public transport. Uh, at such scale, uh, it is supported only by Osmond. Um, <clears throat> okay, uh, we are Osmond uh, team, uh, developers of the, uh, oh, okay, <laughs> uh, we are a small team, yeah, uh, we are 10 people, uh, we are already nine years old, uh, we are open source with other 100 contributors, uh, we have more than one uh, and, f and half million active uh, users. Uh, okay, and uh, mm, at this moment, Osman uh, teams, Osman team, works uh, with uh, four general projects. Uh, our application is designed for two uh, systems: yeah, Android and iOS. Uh, iOS is currently under active development, which can be read in our blog. Uh, soon, the iOS version will come closer to Android in functionality. Uh, also, one of uh, our new projects uh, is Osmond Tracker. And, uh, of course, uh, some of you listened the, uh, to Victor's uh, presentation. Uh, uh, this is uh, open place reviews. Uh, Okay, uh, why did uh, we decided to develop uh, this feature? Uh, this idea was born last year on uh, SOTEM uh, 1018 in uh, Milan. Actually, we decided uh, to do this functionality named uh, public transport navigation, uh, which is rendered according, according to the uh, public transport version uh, to scheme. Uh, this is actually the beginning of the project. Uh, all development continued for almost uh, six months and uh, ended with release 3.3 uh, in March of this year. Uh, there were enough uh, problems uh, in development. Uh, beta testing began at the end of January uh, and took almost one month. Uh, only by this time, uh, Paris 
uh, can one feel the complexity and scale uh, of such uh, a feature as public transport uh, navigation? Uh, okay, uh, actually, uh, who uses uh, public transport navigation? Uh, the first, it used offline uh, by travelers during trips. Uh, of course, they can find a Wi-Fi point, uh, or they can, or they can open Osmond uh, and build a uh, road. <clears throat> and next general group is uh, Osmers. Uh, at the moment, the feature works in the test mode. Uh, there is a road construction that you can follow, but uh, there is no navigation itself. There is no uh, worrying that you are at your stop, etc. Uh, uh -huh. uh, as I said, uh, the feature was according to the data of uh, public transport version 2 scheme. Uh, about public transport version 2 scheme, uh, shortly, uh, any public transport uh, road uh, can be described by exciting elements uh, in uh, OSM, uh, roads, uh, bus stop, uh, platform, and etc. Uh, all this, uh, all, uh, this is uh, described by relation, by special roles. It is quite difficult for a uh, beginner OSMER, uh, which can make a mistake by creating a public transport road with a probability of 95%. Uh, error, in, error in relation will lead to error in the build of the road in Osmond. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, to build uh, a road in Osmond, you need Osmond version 3 and 3 uh, or higher. Uh, you should uh, choose public transport profiles, start and uh, end points. Uh, after that, you should um, click button start. Uh, Osmond algorithm uh, builds uh, roads using only public transport data. Yeah. Um, you choose one of the road variants which is uh, convenient uh, to you. Uh, if you click uh, on details uh, uh, button, your road will have uh, full information. Uh, where you can see the time, distance, bus stops information. Of course, uh, there is uh, an opportunity uh, to show all roads uh, at the map by clicking show uh, on map uh, button and even compare roads uh, on the map and see all alternatives. Um, Okay, uh, when uh, we prepared the release, we decided to write an article about public transport in OSM, uh, where we tried uh, to explain how to build and check public transport uh, roads. You can find this information uh, in our blog, uh, our website, uh, osmond.net. As I said earlier, uh, the feature is in the testing phase because for full functionality, we don't have information from OSM database. Uh, current problems with public transport, uh, it uh, duplicates roads, uh, no full service information, uh, no uh, facilities for handicapped passengers, uh, no support of transport take interval, no support of transport take open hours. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the main problem uh, is uh, timetable. Uh, at this site, we compare our uh, public transport uh, road with uh, Google. As you see, uh, there, is <clears throat> there is information about uh, time departure uh, and uh, arrival in Google Maps, but uh, we don't have this today. Uh, another problem which uh, is a result uh, of lacking timetable that Osmond mixed up a night bus uh, with uh, day tram. Of course, uh, this is uh, an impossible road uh, to use. Yeah. Uh, next part, Victor. Yeah, we'll uh, focus more on the technical stuff. So, of course, as you see, 
It's pretty unusable without schedule, even though it's good to test uh, data, good to see if the routes are connected and so on. But because of these routes that mix up things which are not possible to happen in real life, uh, we, we take a look at GTFS. There are plenty of uh, GTFS providers around the world. Sometimes they are focused on the city level, sometimes on the country level. So anyway, you can find the data and it's uh, open uh, mostly and the, the number of this data is growing. But then we have a, end up in a problem. Uh, how do we match it with, uh, uh, with OSM data? For us, very important to have all the data offline so what we need to build the routes offline, so we need to connect the timetable into uh, our format and mix up with the OSM data. And the, the simple thing is that we cannot find a correlation between TRIP, which is an entity in GTFS, and OSM relation route. Uh, this is one of the master routes. And once we have that uh, relation, once we know if this relation ID matches this trip ID in this GTFS uh, file, then we almost get working, uh, then almost like uh, we already have algorithms to support timetables, uh, and, uh, and, and it's easy to basically make it uh, almost a next release. The problem, of, of course, how do we make the, this relation? How do we make this happen? So we can store trip ID uh, GTFS with a GTF with a link to GTFS file itself in OpenStreetMap because trip ID is not stable. It changes, it generates a new one, it's just a number, it's an ID. So it will uh, basically blow up uh, OSM database. Also, we cannot put an OSM relation ID in GTFS trip table because it's generated by transport companies and municipalities which are not aware of OpenStreetMap. So basically, and also relation ID is not stable enough uh, to remember that this one will stay. So what, what we are searching for and looking for, maybe we probably already found it, at least a couple of alternatives from this conference, a project that collects GTFS and basically can augment trip table with a relation ID from OpenStreetMap. From that point, we can uh, of, uh, parse it build it into our own format because we need to support on mobile clients to make it compact and make use of it. And uh, since then, we basically can support uh, the most important feature, the timetable. Uh, as, as Eugene said, uh, we are on, on a phase to not implement all possible features even though we are missing many features in public transport and algorithm could be done better. But what we are looking for to make a greater use of public transport from OpenStreetMap, get audience attention, so more and, and so data will become more and more reliable. reliable. And uh, comparing to half a year ago, in some countries, we see a tremendous progress. In some countries, of course, there is a, it was already maintained and, great, and had a great support, but in some it still has a quite poor support. So we really hope that in a year, on two, or we will talk about uh, great coverage and all the users will use uh, transport uh, schedule from OpenStreetMap data. Thank you. Thanks, Victor and Eugene, for the lightning talks. Now we will have questions. I think we have about eight, eight minutes. Thank you. Uh, hi, Victor. I'm Ilya. Uh, so you just said that you can find correlation between GTFS trips and OSM road relations. Well, actually, you can. There is not one-to-one -one relation, of course, because there are multiple trips a day. But you can just compare stops for a trip, and any trip has a fixed list of stops and use the proper relation. But then uh, PT version 2 schema you are using, in that stops are optional for a route. Just highways are required. So you might not get a list of stops if you rely and if you promote the PTV2 schema. 
which you call new, but it's 10 years old now. <laughs> so at the last sortum, you had an idea for this. Also, the next public transport scheme was proposed. So what's your opinion on that? Yeah, it's, it's indeed a uh, great, great comment about that, what we can do automatically. And we did, uh, I did myself, investigation in the Netherlands. And almost 15%, uh, the max I reached a 15% coverage of GTFS matching perfectly with OpenStreetMap relation by algorithm comparing the stops. Uh, almost 50%, I, I measured myself manually, I think it's possible to overcome difficulties and main difficulties come that uh, OSM doesn't have, does not have enough relations because in GTFS you really have all possible routes which are at the end of the day, at the beginning, and OSM doesn't have them. So it's possible to fix uh, OpenStreetMap in that way. And 30% uh, kind of, I, I count it as extreme cases where the data is missing or is completely kind of doesn't make sense, so it was hard to manage it. So I think, uh, well, I didn't understand why it's not possible to uh, manage uh, current GTFS mapping with public transport V2 schema. I understand maybe it will not become great, but I could not comment uh, on version three because I didn't uh, look into that tip. I would challenge uh, why to even use the uh, root relations because you have GTFS, so you could uh, simply use GTFS for routes and use the stops which are in OpenStreetMap. So you would challenge why do we need to map relation and maybe we can skip and just have a... Yeah, indeed, but uh, I think because relations are present in OpenStreetMap, we either need to make decision to delete them because they, they, they are not going to maintain, or we need to use them because they are really connected with the stops. We have validation tools that validate if relation matches or not. And it's just one single bit which is missing, comparing to, for example, if you match one level deeper. Here you just miss uh, this bit between one table mapping, what trip ID and relation ID. But I agree, there are multiple possible solutions. Uh, we just need to reach an agreement on which level we actually can map. The problem is that we cannot store mapping neither in GTFS, neither in OpenStreetMap. So we need to find a third party where we store it. Yes, I, I think, well, the, so some uh, nations publish their GTFS uh, data, and I think that will be increasing, and you will have... Uh, uh, an overlap in data for the for the routes. So, in my opinion, probably it would be better to take the routes from the GTFS and uh, the ones in in OpenStreetMap, of course, have their um, can be there as well for for displaying a map, just not for for timetable, just to uh, resolve that ambiguity. I think the most important bit, if I can answer, is to have a validation tool which people will look regularly, and then they, based on the changes that it is required by validation, how many, how much often it is broken, local communities can make decisions either to semi-automate some import from GTFS data or maybe maintain it separately. It, it really will, it could really vary on a local uh, kind of areas and uh, what the data is coming from GTFS, how cool good it is, and so on. So for anyone mapping public transport routes today already, what validators should we look to? What, um, I don't know, JOSM plugins uh, or validation there is helpful so that we create routes that you can consume easily? Uh, well, I think it's a quite typical validation. This is validation hosted on a geofabric. It was, it's already three years old. I think it's good enough. The problem is that, uh, yeah, public transport is hard to basically change without making a mistake. And, but again, the, the day before was a course, how to do it with a plugin, using JOSM. So it is hard and we need validation tool and we need to encourage people to look at the errors of validation tool. For example, in Minsk, 
uh, we did in, in, in Kyiv, it was everything was broken. It was public transport V1 and not supported. But once we built the tool, we start encouraging people, okay, you can use it and check it. And slowly but steadily, people convert to version 2. Now using, keep it green. Once you, you reach the level of green, I think it, for community, it becomes easier to maintain it. But, but when you open and everything red, it's, yeah, that becomes a challenge. A web page? Uh, just asking, uh, I have another tool for validation of uh, public transport routes. It's called PTNA, Public Transport Network Analysis. And this is available in the internet. Just give me a call and I configure that for your network. And it runs every night, presenting you the errors in the routes, gaps and everything else, whether it's PTV, PTV2 or, or 1 or whatever and whether there are missing bus routes or something like that compared to what exists in re reality. So currently I did it uh, for Brazil some weeks ago or some, some days ago based on GTFS data on the routes table, converted it to a uh, CSV file and this is the input for the tool to compare reality versus what we have in OpenStreetMap and it's called ptna.openstreetmap.de Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is really great. We need to give it a bigger media coverage <laughs> through all, all possible channels because these tools really help and uh, of the, sometimes we don't know of their existence. This is great. And it provides it in HTML tables, not in, in uh, graphical form or something like that. Yeah, we need to do it. <laughs> Thanks. Hello, Thank team. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, thank you.